Welcome, my friends. I'm here with a very representative wine from the magnificent denominación de origen calificada Priorat in Catalonia, Spain. In this documentary, we will learn about the history, the people, and the viticultural and winemaking practices of one of the most recognized wine production areas in Europe. Our collaborators, Guillén and Leo, will guide us through the region and introduce us to several viticulturists and winemakers, as well as some of the responsible persons of the regulatory organism of Priora. I hope that you enjoy the journey. Let's take a quick look at the location of Priora DOQ. It is found in Catalonia, in the northeast of Spain. The DOQ covers 11 municipalities of an extension of approximately 20,000 hectares, with 2,000 hectares covered by vines, producing close to 5 tons of grapes for approximately 14,000 hectoliters of wine per year. The area comprises the valleys of the rivers Urana and Monsant, being almost entirely surrounded by mountain ranges. Wine in the Priora has been made since ancient Roman times. Now Tarragona, it was then called Tarraco, and was indeed one of the most important Roman provinces of the Iberian Peninsula. It is easy to find ruins from those times, basically everywhere in Tarragona. Wine production diminished during the 700-year-long occupation of the Iberian Peninsula by the Arabs, it was established when Carthusian monks from Provence, Italy, settled in the area following the Prior, appointed by the Spanish Catholic Church in the 12th century. That's the name of the area, Priorat, or area governed by the Prior. In more modern times, Phylloxera devastated the area in the end of the 19th century. Producers, many of them young, formed strong cooperatives in an effort to recover the splendor of the old times. Some of these cooperatives are still in existence today. Reminiscence of those early joint efforts remain the close relationships between wineries and strong collaborative spirit among viticulturists and winemakers in the area. Several denominations of origin now coexist in the wider Priorat region, with the Denominación de Origen Priorat officially established almost 100 years ago as the most visible one. Super premium wines from the Priorat have, have gained international recognition in recent times, which is why the area is now one of the only two denominaciones de origen calificadas, or DOC in Spain, or DOQ from the Catalan word qualificada. The history goes that King Alphonse de Cast sent two knights to survey the country in order to find an ideal place for the Cartusian order to settle in Catalonia. When they arrived at the foothills of the Mont Sant, or Holy Mountain, they were struck by the beauty of the area and asked a separ about it. The separ told them about a supernatural occurrence that had happened in the middle of the valley a long time before. From the highest pine tree, a ladder had appeared along which angels ascended to heaven. The knights told the king about the story and he offered the region to the order. The Cartusians, fully established in 1194, built an altar dedicated to Santa Maria where that tree was. The story gave name to the monastery the Cartusa de Scala Dei, or Monastery of the Ladder to God, and created an iconography strongly rooted to the region. The Cartusians of Escalade dressed in white wool and a hood that covered their seven heads. They planted vineyards and made wine in the monastery, adopting a life of work and spirituality. Prior to wine could well be a mystical wine. Today, the ruins of the Cartusian monastery provide a breath of mystery and attract many visitors. Our collaborators, Guillén and Leo, will show us how the monks live in the Cartusia. We're going to enter the cells 
or one of the cells where the monks used to do their life of solitude and meditation. Uh, in these cells, they would just spend all their time alone just by thinking, meditating and reading. Here, they would be uh, alone and they would spend only, uh, they would only meet with other people three times a day. Uh, they were only uh, allowed to have common uh, meals with the rest, with the remainder of the community, only for one time a week on Sundays in the common refectory. So otherwise, that would be the space that the monks would to habit on their own. For example, here we have a place where they would dedicate themselves to the study, meditation, and also to the uh, prayers. And here, this is the space that they used to live. Place to eat. Place a very uh, frugal and humble place to sleep. And of course, a chimney they, they, they will use to uh, warm themselves in the very cold winter days, which become quite rough here in this area. We are here in Purrera, which is uh, one of the towns of Priorat, uh, which uh, who uh, host uh, as many as uh, 16 uh, wineries of this uh, region. And today we are going to interview the president of the uh, Council of Regulation of the uh, Protected uh, uh, Denomination Area of Priorat. So we have the privilege to uh, talk to the responsible person of uh, making sure that the very strict regulations that make this region one of the most renowned uh, wine areas of Catalonia uh, as, as good as, as it is. We are here at the ermita of the village of Purera, which is one of the representative towns of Priorat. We have the pleasure and honor to interview the president of the regulatory organism of denomination of origin of Priorat, who has received us very kindly. And for this project of wine, we are very pleased to be able to have his opinions. For example, you are the president of the regulatory council, but you also have a winery. Therefore, this allows you to have a much closer connection with the tasks that you perform as president of the organism. Yes. In my first term as president, I tried to avoid any direct participation in any winery in order to gain an open and respectful interaction. When I stopped my participation in a winery, there was a legislative change that forced presidents to pertain to the collective. Therefore, due to this change, they proposed to me to continue as president while participating in my own winery. What is my experience with both situations? While you have a respect for everyone in the collective, you must try to guarantee the same criteria to apply to all. But when you live in a territory like Priorat, you sense it, you make it yours, and you participate with your own winery. It makes you get to know the intimacy of the winery and you feel its interiority in your own skin. You know what affects and what does not affect you. 
the issues, the climatic challenges, the suffering. But you also experience the joy and the recognition. We don't want to take more of your time, but let's get to a more technical question for a moment. Concerning the Regulatory Council, what is its function and what are the directives that are imposed? An artist. I'll try to make it simple. While the artist is alive, there could be recognition, but nobody knows what will end up happening, as it could degenerate into an unwanted situation. Therefore, there is recognition, but also expectation. It is only when the artist disappears that the artistic creation can achieve the highest recognition as a whole. In the art world, a recognized artist leaves a series of creations. What's the value of all that? What's the role of the regulatory council? To ensure a strict compromise between those who create and those who want to participate in the project. Who participates? Who buys a bottle? When you buy a bottle of Priorat, who guarantees that what the producer says is correct? The regulatory council must be who provides credibility, not who tells you who is that or how that wine is made. That's the role of the producer. That's between the producer and the buyer. You may like it or not. But who attests that what the producer says is the truth? That's the regulatory council, like a public notary. All right. And here we are, playing to attest that who makes wine with grapes from Priorat is a Priorat. And who makes a wine from grapes from a single vineyard is also a Priorat, but only from that vineyard. And you can be interested in that. Hello, good morning. So uh, here, we, here we are near Purrera and uh, now we're going to discuss with the uh, agronom engineer and enologist of the uh, DO of Priurat. Uh, her name is Sandra, now we're going to switch to Catalan and so she's been so uh, kind to uh, allow us to discuss with her some technicalities of the wine production and of the area of Priurat. Good morning. Let me introduce you to Sandra. I am Guillén. Thank you very much for receiving us and to talk to us. We would like to talk about some technical aspects about the designation of Priorat. It is a designation of origin of quality, which is a distinction not very common in Spain, right? And Catalonia. No, in fact, there are only two in Spain. And in Catalonia, we are the only designation of origin that is qualified. The nomenclature is qualified. It makes us proud because we have traits that are characteristics that put us apart from the rest of Dos O Catalonia. And in a few words, what would those characteristics be? We set the minimum potential alcohol grade that wines must have to qualify. We set the grape weight per hectare. We advise, watch over and control sanitary aspects. There are several things like, for example, that Purerat wines must be bottled inside the designation of origin. Wines cannot leave the do without the official regulatory stamp. Bottled in glass and sealed. There are many regulations beyond these, the most basic ones. And with respect of the varieties, there are a number that are typical or characteristics, right? Yes, we also put emphasis on grape varieties. We have a series of grapes that we recommend. Two varieties that we recommend that are Granacea and the Carinara. And then we have a total of 15 that are authorized including Ganesha and the Carinara and white Ganesha. Are these varieties all autochthonous or have they been imported? 
Some are foreign like Cabernet Savion, Saya, Merlot, but they have adapted very well. Studies show that they have substantially differentiated from those grown in their locations of origin. They have adapted to our climatology and our orography, our sun, and they are totally different organolectically. Therefore, summarizing, what would be the characteristics that a variety must have to succeed in this region? Yes, exactly. And they really need to be heroic because they need to be highly tolerant to drought. We have very low rainfall levels in our designation of origin, many hours of sunlight. Therefore, they must be varieties that adapt very well to stress and that find their own way to survive, to auto-regulate. And in summary, they need to be very well adapted or it would otherwise be a total failure. They need to tolerate the climatology as well as the type of soil. Exactly, because here we have a low percentage of Lycochloria, which is slate where it all falls vertically down and there does not remain nutrients in the surface as with clay. Therefore, the plant must find its way to survive with this rock to be able to find nutrients and water for proper growth and achieve the grade that we need and the optimal ripening to be allowed into the winery. How does the plant find nutrients? In fact, here the vine does not grow shallow roots forming a circle. The roots grow deep down, arriving to depths of five or six meters. There have been cases even deeper. The vines here are very tolerant, adapt themselves and grow their feeder roots, net in look for nutrients at high depths. Basically, they keep digging until they find the necessary nutrients. This characteristic makes vines to survive long periods. Proof of that of a century vines commonly found in Piriorat. With respect to the harvest, there is also one way to do it here. Yes, it is a bit complicated. If you have observed the landscape, most vineyards are found in steep slopes. This makes impossible for harvesting machinery to access the vines, forcing the harvest to be by hand. With boxes of lightweight, it's difficult. There are some who invent ways to get the harvested fruit down the slopes. Also an important aspect is the diversity in conditions, right? In other words, within the general characteristics, there are also differences between parcels across the region. Yes, different zones indeed. We divide the DO into three zones. Basically, according to ripening times, the first one would be the early zone, the lowest zone in altitude with Salones del Mola, Belimunt and El Lora, the second zone of medium ripening with two Virielas, Gratalops and Torja, and the late ripening zone at higher altitudes, including Polabelda, Porella, Scala, Dia, La, Moria, and the area of Masses de Falset. Depending on location, there could be 15 to 20 days of difference in the organology states with the same variety. It is also crucial how a slope is orientated. Some aspects favor some varieties versus another, depending on the sunlight hours needed by the plant to mature. There is a high biodiversity with many different varieties coexisting and presenting differences even within the same village. Once the harvest is done, are there specific regulations applying to the winemaking or further treatment of the grapes? The council not only sets the minimum potential alcohol levels to be allowed into the winery, we also establish minimum alcoholic levels for the wines produced, which are 13% for whites and 13.5% for reds. Anything below would not qualify as Pirarat DOQ. From here, the winemakers use different types of fermentation as they find better fit their desired styles. Priorat is famous for elevated alcoholic grade levels, right? Easily 14.5% and many times more than that. 
What we always explain when we present the DO is that there should not be fear towards a bottle of wine with 14.5% or 15 APV. If a wine is well elaborated in its optimal conditions, coming from a bunch with excellent properties, the wine does not bum on the palate, providing a smooth sensation in the mouth. No one should be afraid of this. It is intrinsic to our climate. We cannot do less. We cannot produce wines of inferior grade. There are quality controls before being able to bottle a wine, right? What are those about? A wine of a DO must pass an analytic control. Fulfilling all the stipulated conditions by the plan, alcohol, levels, acidity, etc. Then it goes to a tasting panel of the council. The tasting panel accredits if the wine qualifies organoleptic alley. From here, the wine can be bottled and then we have different classifications for our wines. With the names of the wines of the territory, each one carrying a different meaning. What are the classifications that we have in Priorat? Can we explain this? This is a large triangle. We would start at the top corner. We have the Grands Vins de Vigna Classificada. After that, the Vines de Vigna Classificada. Then the Vines de Parigete. The Vines de Villa. And finally, generic wines. But we also have the Vela Vinus, or vines from before 1945. And we also have vines de viticulto, which applies to wines made directly by the viticulturist. Well, we are very happy to have been here and share all this. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. We will leave it here. We are very pleased for having been received. Many thanks. Many thanks. Welcome again, my friends. In this section, we will discuss the climate, the geology, and the soils that make Priorat one of the most exciting wine production areas in the international stage. Priorat is one of the warmest and driest Spanish areas, with a clearly defined continental climate, with long sunny summers and rare rainfalls. This is a very surprising characteristic given its proximity to the Mediterranean. Indeed, the border of Priorat closest to the ocean is only 13 kilometers away, while its further point is slightly over 30 kilometers away from the coastal line. The mountains forming the valleys of the rivers Sirana and Monsant screen the DOQ very effectively from the Mediterranean influence. In general terms, the climate is more extreme than most uh, continental areas. However, even though Priorat DOQ covers in a small area, there is a variety of different microclimates present. Most importantly, there is a marked contrast between the valleys and the, and the higher areas, with sites at higher altitudes up to 700 meters much colder than those at lower altitudes. The variety of aspects and slopes due to the dominance of the mountain ranges also contributes to the climatologic diversity. Freezing winds from the north, which are somehow mitigated by the Monsant, lead to risk of winter freeze and spring frost, while the warm Mistral wind from the east helps to rise temperature in some areas. Perhaps the most important climatic characteristic is the elevated temperatures and lack of rain during the summer months, coinciding with the growth and maturation of the grapes. Indeed, some quality vineyards are planted in the slopes facing north to avoid the excessive heat from sunlight. Mm -hmm. 
We have already mentioned the very diverse orography of Priorat DOQ. Its geology is served by most of Catalonia, which is indeed uh, a compact massif surrounded by cliffs and rocky slopes made up of oligocene conglomerates. This reaches its zenith of beauty in Priorat, with Montsant as one of the most representative mountains in the region. Hey, but let's hear from the president of the regulatory council talk about this. I will ask you questions about the peculiarities of Priorat. How would you express in a few words what makes Priorat a singular viticulture region? It's complex because no one knows what defines best or quickest the Priorat. For me, what is more difficult to explain are the mountain slopes. You find a vineyard in a slope with an inclination and you need to explain the singularity of that inclination and the corresponding exposure as it greatly affects the wine. So the most difficult things make more sense. The terroir. The terroir. I like to say that we have a privileged terroir to make bunches of the highest quality that gives the wine a uniqueness, an identity sign, character. If we are capable of transferring what the terrain offers into the bottle, that's the magic of Priorat. Could it be explained in simple terms? That's a different issue. But this is the essence. It is to say, I have a privileged site because it is very rigorous. The vine actually likes rigor. The vine is a plant that likes to be brought to a point of suffering. As a consequence, the fruit is a very peculiar one. It's rigorous because the climate and the terrain characteristics, right? Yes, the soil. The development of the plant is marked by the rock Yikorea. First, it is very poor in organic matter. The plant does not have a great feeding capacity. This is a challenge. The plant needs to grow very long roots to find sources of water reserves, particularly during the summer. Aside of this, the fact it's a mountainous region makes exposure to sunlight important. Sunlight levels can be very high in some locations. The vineyards are like solar panels, very exposed to radiation. And the fact that the soil is dark with black rock enhances sunlight absorption, partly reflected back to the plant. The plant receives two impacts, one directly from the sun and also the reflection from the soil which, when heating up, transfers heat back into the plant. The plant would not tolerate this if it was not on this inclination and didn't have proximity to the sea. It generates natural air currents that cool the plant down, just like having a fan. This air movement, always present even when there is no wind, makes the plants move and helps tolerate the rigorous heat. It is a protection that the plant must achieve for its bunches to make the grape skins to be thicker. This structure ends up leading to a unique product. Aside of the terroir, which we have discussed now, Priorat can be characterized by a way of doing things. A particular style of production? Yes, because Priorat, aside from its complexity and terroir, even big wine enterprises and families, when they arrive, Priorat is what determines their investment. Priorat determines performance. This makes what you may look for in another place unachievable, because the terroir does not allow it. It is your decision to make this singularity part of your product or not. What sets the character of your product, above all, is the terroir. So it is not only the terroir what determines the product. But how do you act with this terroir? 
Also, given our commitment of respect with the environment, respect for nature, respect for biodiversity, it also sets how Priorat is. In normal conditions, we apply half of necessary treatments, way less than what is done in other areas. Therefore, we are very respectful of the environment, and we want to be even more respectful. Our nature, the way we are, sometimes stubborn at Priorat, it makes us look for values that have little to do with productivity. When you go to a territory that is homogenous, where everything has been mechanized, where anything that does not increase productivity does not make sense, it's difficult to talk about singularity with thousands of hectares that are all the same. However, in a territory where every 50 meters there is a change of orientation, in altitude, in inclination, morning sun or afternoon sun, where every 50 meters something happens, it's very difficult to have a single explanation. Correct, I see. With our explanation, we didn't want to tell you what you see. What you see is your interpretation of what the artist has made. You look at the mountain, and we will only provide the arguments that you can use to elaborate your own interpretation of our art. Thank you very much. We appreciate that you have received us for Wine Dos. It's a great honor. You're welcome. I hope that this works well. This wine, whatever. Wine Dos, wine, denomination of origin. Ah, oh, wait, wine Dios. <laughs> it's also a marketing thing. You know what is the best of all this? Now imagine that one day, with the wine Dios, some Californian friends come. They meet with some French friends. Others arrive from a university in Italy. Others from another place in the world. And we serve five bottles along the table. Do you know what would be most beautiful? That with the bottles covered, they could say, this is the French, this is the Spanish. You know? Yes, yes, absolutely. The wines with their own identity. This is the spirit with which we are doing this project. I believe so, and we hope that it goes ahead. Very good. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure. My pleasure to you too. Thanks, Leo. We've heard the word already, licorella. But what is it? Well, actually, licorella is a mixture of black slate and coarse soy. It provides a truly unique terroir to the Priorat due to its different characteristics. On the one hand, it is a dark slate, which translates into a good retention of heat that will be given back to the plant during colder nights. On the other hand, the coarse re helps reflecting the sun rays back to the plant, helping green growth during the coldest periods. Importantly, slate is a rock easy to exfoliate, a layer rock, providing avenues for the wine roots to dig down to high depths in look of nutrients. This is a highly beneficial thing when the soil itself is poor in nutrients. But let's hear the locals talk about this soil. I understand that Licorella provides a very good water drainage and forces the vine to look for it at high depths, right? Yes, but it depends on how you work the vineyard. The problem that we have working with herbicides and ploughing, to a larger extent with herbicides than with ploughing, is that the root system stays very superficial and it suffers much more at times of very high heat. If there is no competition because there are no other plants, the root stays up. However, when cover plants are present, the roots cannot go up because the place is already occupied and must look down. This is all very interesting to observe. You provide the vine with some surface competition because a cover crop won't arrive too deep, as the vine can actually dig very deep down. 
And this is transferred on how the grape matures, the harvest time, etc. How? We don't know. There we are. You are trying to identify these differences. Right. We who are scientists, we are used to making experiments and get results in a period of time more or less short. An experiment for you would take to wait the whole season. No, no, 10 years, at the very least. Think that it's a slow change. We cannot plant cover crops and expect the roots to go down deep right away. It is more complex than that. The first year it will suffer because it is used to having no competition. When there is competition, then it must start growing down. But starts looking to grow in the surface. Then it will compete and suffer and decrease production at first. We are very aware of this. But when each year it finds competition, then it will dig down and in the end it will find its way. It's a question of patience. Here I am again, this time to discuss viticultural practices in Priorat de DOQ. So far we have seen how unique Priorat is, and there are several reasons for this. Of course, the string continental climate and the orography of the region stand as the most important aspects, determine the viticultural practices in the area, and we will discuss those in a moment. But there are also historic developments that have shaped how viticulture and winemaking is understood in Priorat, and this is perhaps one special characteristic of this area. In a region with a climate and terrain so challenging to cultivate, and with such difficult access to vineyards in steep slopes, together with migration of people into urban areas, there was a time when viticulture was almost abandoned in Priorat. Son resisted against all odds and joined efforts forming strong cooperatives to, de to deal with the difficult market at the time. Some of these cooperatives are still in operation nowadays. One of them, in Porrera, unites a dozen viticulturists and sell their grapes to Sins de Porrera, one of the wineries collaborating in this documentary. Misericordia runs a specialized wine store in Porrera, which aside of selling wines from producers in the area is also the headquarters of the cooperative. Let's see how she explains to Guillena Leo how a cooperative works in Priora. Good morning, everybody. Today we are in Purera at Plaza Catalunya of Purera. And today they will explain how the cooperative located here works in this store and you will allow me to introduce you to the manager of this store. I am the Misericordia, but everyone knows me by Corey. Instead, what we try for the wine of Piriat is to be known everywhere. And for that, we have this store with the wines from the producers in the village and other things I'm interested in, always from within Piriat. Here, you can do tastings, you can get wine by the glass, and of course, you can buy bottles of wine. This is my intention running this store. Before, you mentioned that here we can find wines from the cooperative. Therefore, the wineries that form part of the cooperative are wineries that need to request to be part of it. In fact, there are not wineries forming part of the cooperative. Here in the cooperative, we are farmers. Currently, we are about 10 to 12 partners. I would not be able to tell for sure right now. Then what they do at the winery Crimes de Poria is to rent the installations from the cooperative and buy the cooperative's grasps from his partners. Basically, all that is produced by Kim's de Porora is done with product from the partners of the cooperative. In addition, there are other smaller wineries in town, but with those, the relation is individual. There are people that make wine exclusively from their own vineyards, and there are wineries a bit larger that can buy grapes from several farmers and produce their own wines. But the cooperative works exclusively with the product from partners of the cooperative. 
Therefore, the case of Sims de Purera is a special case because they have their own vineyards, but alternatively, they also buy from the viticulturists in the area that are associated to the cooperative. Yes, from the cooperative. All pass by the cooperative. We are cooperative until the moment the product goes into the winery. From that moment on, who decides how the wine is made, the price mark, all that is related with that. Then it is crimes de Poria. Then they are who take over from there. We are cooperative until the product gets to the winery. Then the cooperative itself must also follow the council regulations. Yes, not only those from the regulatory council, but also Kimes de Poria visits the vineyards and maintain a control during the whole year of how all is working in our vineyards. From this control, they know that the product they will get will be a product adequate for what they want. They will do different wines. From the youngest vines, they produce a particular wine style. Here, we used to say that the oldest vineyards provide the best product, and is true because they produce very little. But here we do wines from vineyards that are relatively young. Because here a vine is 30, 35, 40, and even up to 45, we consider it young. They give very interesting products, and their prices are a bit more affordable always taking into account that the period the cost of production of wines here is always a little more elaborated than in other places. Here are all more expensive with small scale production. The cooperative is small in the challenging terrain? Exactly, that is an added challenge. Here all is manual for sure. All of this ends leading to very interesting wines. The unique orography with vineyards and slopes, which are better ventilated and well spaced, ends providing a product different from vineyards in flatter locations. I understand. Therefore, and just to finish, aside of managing the activity of the cooperative, in this store you also display other wines in general, particularly from the vicinity of Purera but also from other wineries in the Priorat. Yes, luckily. Here we have wines from very small wineries that if it was not because of this store and other stores located in the area, there would be known because there is not enough production to make distributors interested in representing these wines. Here you have the opportunity to taste them and if you like them, buy them as well. Fabulous. Thank you very much for the time you spent with us. Thank you. Thank you. All that is promoting Pirat is, for me, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's come back to the climate and the terrain of Pirat and see how they shape viticultural practices of the DOQ. On the one hand, the extreme continental climate with extremely hot and dry summers. Uh, this adds to the prohibition of irrigation and the fact that soils in Priorat are very poor in nutrients. This imposes tremendous challenges to the viticulturist when trying to grow a particular grape variety. On the other hand, we had the very irregular orography with a large variety of aspects, inclinations, terrain compositions and altitudes. This makes it impossible to mechanize viticultural tasks such as vineyard treatments, canopy management and harvest that need to be done manually by hand. Despite these challenges, viticulturists of Priorat are extremely committed to the environment and are adopting sustainable and organic viticultural practices. Guillén and Leo have met with two winemakers of Priorat who also own their own vineyards and who will guide us through the viticultural idiosyncrasy of Priorat DOQ.
Hello, so we are here in a terroir called uh, La Planeta. La Planeta because it is uh, relatively flat, as we will see later. Uh, we used to the very, very steep uh, fields in a priorat, but here is one of the very rare ones where uh, it, the, the uh, land is not so steep. And uh, it's also quite peculiar because uh, it, it's peculiar in many, many senses. It's one of the highest uh, fields of uh, Al Priorat, around 700, 750 meters of uh, height. Uh, it, it is just below the mountain of Mount San. So the uh, land here has a different soil uh, in comparison with the rest of the soil of this uh, region, because it's made of the rocks of uh, the mountain which are uh, coming from a sedimentary uh, processes forming this conglomerate those are uh, those are the stones from from rivers uh, that uh, deposit uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, the, at, the, at the bottom of lakes forming this conglomerate and so this soil is very different from the soil that is usually found in the priorat made of this uh, licorella uh, clay, uh, so uh, this is a uh, very appropriate to grow the Cabernet Sauvignon variety, which is not very common in a Priorat, uh, but uh, this uh, grape, uh, this, this area is quite well adapted to, for Cabernet Sauvignon because it's relatively high, it's got a different soil that doesn't heat the grapes uh, as much as Licorea does, so it is appropriate for, uh, for, this, uh, for this variety that is a little bit more delicate, and so allows uh, this uh, seller Passa now to grow this uh, very special uh, wine. Jordi, we are here at La Planeta, where you practice ecologic viticulture. What is that? Ecologic viticulture consists on not just using a set of chemicals that in conventional agriculture are commonly used. Here we only allow organic or ecologic treatments we use sulfur and copper to treat the diseases of the vine. That's the only thing used. And this together with allowing cover crops to grow to consolidate its own ecosystem helps the plant to do well. This is a vineyard that was planted at the end of the 80s. And now we are renovating a few rows. As you can see, those rows over there have a paler green or yellowish green in comparison with the other rows. We renew them little by little to maintain the antiquity because we look to guarantee the quality of the grape. If we try the fruit from those vines over there and these vines here, It has two or three weeks before harvest. If we try the fruit from here instead, in these vines that are much older, you will notice an important difference. Those ones were more marked. When we started in the year 1996 with our father in this area, we worried with the viticulturists because they were getting paid 30 cents. 
Now we are paying at 5 euros, no more problem. But before we paid 30 cents and the viticulturist could not survive. Young people were leaving, moving to the city to look for work because this was not profitable and my father decided to change it, to pay them more. In the first year we were paying 1 euro per kilogram and from there to what we pay now. Little by little, until what we have achieved now, the farmer works a vineyard, wins a few cents and that is not sustainable. And then you have the intermediary who makes the money because if you go to them, you pay much more. You pay a considerable price, but most goes to the intermediary. Here we stop that. The viticulturist must make a good life if we really want them to take care of the vine and obtain a successful product. If you pay them poorly, the grapes will be made just to survive, and indeed they won't survive and abandon it or sell it. We need to do this to pay well for them to live here and live well in the town and obtain a good product, and that was the idea. On this aspect you are pioneers, those who decided to start this initiative, because we now have extremely well-known wineries in Priorat that are very recognized in the territory like Scaladei, Clos Mogadors, Alvaro Palacios, Bailac, etc. But this has been the result of a process started here. Everyone has contributed to the success of Priorat. The four Kloss wineries, when they started placing the bar high like the Ermita with the actions in United States, etc. All of these are little things that have helped Priorat to achieve this recognition and with a very high level of wines. We are not making wines of 40, 60, 100, 200, 600, 1000 euros with bad grapes or bad must. We cannot lie to the customer. And this is the work needed for this. Clearly, we still need herbicides. Some weeks grow weeds because we only treat once a year, but precisely in this vineyard, all the way down here, at the very end down there, we are experimenting with natural agricultural methods. Where we leave cover crops to grow, we mow it and nurture it with organic fertilizers. It's a different way of working the land. The maximum you do is to fertilize take care of wild crops, but not plowing or... We don't touch the soil because we intend that in the land, nature is what should create an ecosystem. Right now, of all the microorganisms in the soil, here we don't have almost any. Why? Because either plowing kills it all, or with herbicides nothing survives. If you allow crops to grow, it provides means to recover an ecosystem and an equilibrium, but this takes a long time. This is not growing crops and next year all is good. One of the ideas is to allow nature to follow its natural path, be minimally invasive, right? To some extent, not completely. If you let wild crops free, it will eat it all up and the vine will die. We have that very clear. But still, you aim at a minimum intervention with an ecologic approach. But the product is also different, which would be the main intention in these conditions. That is correct. It is also very important looking into the future, where we are coming from and where we are going. The reality is that we are destroying the soil. We know this. There is no organic matter. All the CO2 went into the atmosphere. In the soil there is little carbon. And in the end, the problem that we have is that carbon reserves have been passed up into the atmosphere. And finally, the grapes. Priorat is well known by its opulent wines from Garnacha and Cariñena, two grapes that find a perfect habitat in the climatologic conditions of the region. These are indeed the recommended varieties. However, several others are also allowed, some of which are responsible for extremely high quality wines. Among the reds, we have Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Syrah. Some of these have adapted particularly well to the highest altitudes of the DOQ and developed a unique character in Priorat. We will be tasting a cap from the winery Pasanao, which is certainly delicious. 
four white varieties are also allowed. Macabeo, Pedro Jiménez, Chenin Blanca, and Granacha Blanca. Pirola whites are delicate and rank among my personal favorites. Let's see some footage of some of these games. So you taste the grapes, and there comes a time when you say, folks, next week. In a couple of days, we should harvest. It depends on the weather, whether it will rain or not. Of course, the conditions, if it's going to be hot or cold. Respect to the weather, you mean that if it rains now, it's not a good day to harvest, right? No, or if next week it will rain, well, let's harvest now or next week will be super hot and will dehydrate the vine. We anticipate. Are these Cabernet? No, these are Cariñena. Ah, Cariñena, okay. Those are Cariñena and we have Garnacha down there. Those have the red more alive. And these, I am sure, they are sweeter. No, no, actually, the others were sweeter. This seems softer. I find them very sweet. I would harvest right away. <laughs> By now, we know a couple of things about Priora. One of them is that its wines tend to have a high alcoholic graduation. Another is that grapes grow and mature under intense hot and dry weather. Well, naturally, these two aspects are strongly related. Grapes obtain high levels of maturation in the vine, accumulating high levels of sugar that will be then converted into high levels of alcohol. Also, stream heat leads to a quite quick decrease in the acidity level of the grapes before harvest. This adds to the fact that Garnacha is not a grape characterized by its high natural acidity. Garnacha is also a thin skin grape and will produce low levels of tannins in the final wine. Lots of sugar turning into high alcohol and lack of acidity and tannins can lead to an unbalanced wine. It is for these reasons that winemaking is particularly challenging in Priorat. The winemaker needs to make sure that the wines display a high concentration of fruit to counteract the high alcohol and perhaps add Cariñena, a grape of higher acidity and tannins, to obtain the optimal balance of structural components in the final wine. But there are many ways to produce a high quality wine and Priorat winemakers know well how to make outstanding products. We will visit the installations of two well-known wineries of Priorat. Our collaborators Guillermo and Leo will talk to Adria Perez, one winemaker of Fins de Porrera, an initiative to recover centenary vineyards that involves a cooperative of viticulturists in the town of Porrera. They will also discuss with Judith and Guillermo from Bodegas Toto Marquez, a boutique winery in the town of Poboleda, who will let us know about how wine is made in Priorat. Before they get in, we select the grapes here. They all pass by the sorting track because they come from different farmers that may do different sorting at the vineyard. What is selecting? Make sure the berries are well. We select for health and color. The grapes go from six days of maceration some whites also macerate, and the old vines macerate up to 60 days. It depends. All this for vilification. From this moment, the small vessels are for the premium wines, 
and the large ones are for the high volume. During the process of fermentation, is there any mixture done? Yes, with those wines, the most basic ones, we do montage. We take the wine and throw it on top with a pump. But with the others, it is different. We don't do pigage, which is pushing the skins down. We don't do it anymore. What we do now in these two vessels, that one and that one, is a different thing, which is an infusion. Pushing it down? No, we don't push, it's static. We have a filter. We enter the grapes from the bottom, from the lower end of the vessel, through that valve over there or this one. And here we have a filter, here. The vessel starts to fill. As we keep filling it up, what happens? The skins don't go beyond this point, only the liquid remains. This is infusion, neither bijage nor montage. The skins are always submerged. For the other vessels, it is conventional. Depending on the wine, we can do some pigage or simply montage. We don't do much more because we don't want to be very abstractive. Okay, I see. And this depends on the year, on the wine, on how we feel our vintage. Therefore, to decide to finish fermentation, you taste? And we taste continuously to see the evolution before the pressing. And this is subjective, it depends on your own taste. This process could take 4 or 30 days, maybe 15, 10 or 60. Some wines take months. Once you know what you like, we press and then we have several options for the wine. We do maturation in concrete, maturation in barrique and maturation in glass de majuanas. After the press upstairs, we leave the wine a few days to rest. We transfer it and get rid of the proslies and then we bring it down here. For those to mature in oak, we use barriques. We have them from 350 to 600 liters. Options are concrete, barriques or damajuanas, made of glass, to avoid any interference of flavors. And here we mature the wines. We do the crianza. How long? One year, six months, it depends on the wine. It depends on the process, we keep tasting and decide. We always try to diversify because it is very interesting to see the evolution in concrete. The evolution in barrique or the evolution on glass. Here we have our repository, the cemetery with bottles of Les Cousines. Here we store at least 60 bottles from each wine from each vintage. This is from 98. This is a Tena. There are many, particularly from the old vintages, that do not have a real market value because they are wines of 15 or 20 years in the bottles. These are the first vintages from 96. This is the very first vintage made by my father. We went into the market in 2019 with a harvest from 2015. It was not easy because nobody knows you. Yes, it is Priory but they don't know you, and we're not making a low-game wine. 
our prices are not low. For example, Omus is found for $27 more or less, and Shiris for $39. Here we do the tastings to select the final wines, to see which one we like the most. What percentage of one variety of the other. Although it is always similar. And this is a press that I told you about. It is a manual press. All the grapes pass through here? Yes, all the grapes pass through here. From here we move it down and there is where we do it. This is to lower the barricades, and as you see, we are a small winery, but we have good space. We chose Priorat because, apart from being close, the quality of wine is high, and the designation of qualified origin gives you a good starting point that pushes you to develop a top quality product. But this has two faces, right? The DOQ also enforces some very high requirements. Yes, this is true. From the varieties that we plant to the alcoholic grade that you need to produce or the acidity, you cannot take anything out of Priorat that is not bottled. All is strictly controlled by the DO. This is good on the one hand, but on the other, it requires a much more exhaustive control. We press a wine and move it to a vessel and we need to mark it. If we transfer to another one, we mark it again in order to properly identify how long the wine has been there. You would do it by yourself, but you know that they will look into it. We use yeast strains that guarantee the complete consumption of the sugar. To ensure that there is no sugar left, and to make sure that the high level of sugar in the grape is converted into high levels of alcohol, maintaining a structural balance. This is something we take care of at harvest. The acidity goes down and the sugar up. We look to harvest at the optimal equilibrium point. We usually harvest at a level of 5.5 to 6 of acidity, and alcohol we range from 14.5 to 15.5. In respect to the body, the changes in temperature between night and day forces the grapes to protect themselves, growing very thick skins that will provide lots of aromas and tannins. Of course, we also control these qualities during fermentation. We do remontage twice a day. This increases density. This during the whole fermentation process, right? Yes, we do it. The skins go up again, and then we push them down again. And like this until we obtain the level of density that we want. Eventually, we start doing it only once a day to prevent oxidation, among other things. This allows us to extract lots of tannins and aromas from the skins. After pressing, we end up with a very dry paste. We extract all we can. Therefore, you have the wines sometime in barriques around 12 months, right? Yes, they stay in barrique for 12 months that are a maximum of 4 or 5 years old, but we rotate. Say 25% new ones, 25% a year old, 25% 2 years old, and so on. The main grapes are Garnacha and Cariñena. With these two we use a mix of ages. With another variety like Sira, we only use new oak. Yes, because in that case, it is not a 600 litre oak vessel. We use small barriques and we always use new oak. And then obtain a wine that can be aged in the bottle as well, right? Yes, our wines we store them ourselves in bottles before release for some period of time. 
From here, the wines can age for 10 years and improve. From there, they will still maintain that level for another two to four years. And from there, they will go down slowly. You will open a bottle after 20 years and the wine will still be good. The unique characteristics of Priorat also provide its wines with unique characteristics that should be noticeable when drunk, whether a red or white. A high alcohol level balanced with strong fruit concentration that results in full body wines. This should be the common denominator across all good wines from the area. From here, there is a rainbow of aromatic and structural possibilities that depend on the grapes used and the winemaking and maturation processes chosen, such as whether a wine has been matured in oak barriques or glass lamajuanas, for example. And remember, Priora winemakers like experimenting. I am sure that you now understand why I have selected this wine as a display for this documentary. It is a wine from Scala Day. Remember, the ladder to God. I guess that I should open and try it. Let's go. Let's taste it. It's a beautiful color, ruby color. For pronounced intensity of, of aromas, red fruits, cranberry, raspberry, but also for black fruits, uh, black currant, maybe black cherries. It's a dry wine of a fruity style. Very good acidity. Uh, most likely a mixture of garnacha and cariñena because of the of the different kind of fruit flavors that you can get. It's full body, high alcohol. With a good complexity of uh, aromas, you have um, vanilla, cedar from oak aging, and, and a, and a very kind of long finish. Mm. The fruit is very well integrated with all the secondary aromas. Still not a lot of tertiary, still some time to age. This this wine kind age for, for a number of years. I'm convinced that the best way to taste the wine is to be in the area in where it was produced. Guillén and Leo have had the opportunity to taste some incredible wines from Celer, Passanao and Bodegas Toto markets. Let's see what do they have for us. Hi, we are in La Morera de Monsan, one of the villages of El Priorat, right next to the mountain of Monsan. And here, uh, this village is host of uh, the uh, Cellar Pasanao. Pasanao is one of the cellars that produces Priorat, small production we're going to visit today. We are here in uh, Pasanao Cellar. Uh, they've been so kind to uh, uh, receive us so they can explain us uh, their wines and uh, a few details of how they uh, do their activity. So today I'm uh, with Jordi, who's uh, the uh, uh, owner uh, of this uh, cellar together with uh, his wife uh, Valerie. So uh, now we're going to switch to Catalan and uh, so we're going to speak in the or local language. How are you Jordi? Good day. I'm fine. Good morning. Thank you very much for receiving us. It will be a great pleasure to know your wines. Thanks. Look, here we have a wide variety of wines. We have a white and then the rest are reds, with a common denominator, 
that all have some carnacha. We can start tasting this white. Fabulous! This one is somehow special because usually to make a white in Priorat, we commonly use carnacha blanca. Yes, yes, yes. Viognier is also used, but in this case it's 90% Viognier and 10% Pedro Ximenez. Do you want to try? It is one of the few Viognieres at Priorat, right? No, there are more Viognieres, but with this percentage so elevated, I am not aware of any other. It has an intense yellow colour. Aromas very pleasant. Very fresh. The fruit is very integrated, with a very soft acidity. How would you describe it? Yes, it's very aromatic. Very aromatic, but at the same time it's dry. The finish gives you a note uh, coming from Pedro Ximenez, which is very characteristic. We will do these four reds if you wish. Of course. Go ahead, please. We will start with this one. Here we have a Vide Vila Purera 2018, which has been selected in 2021 as wine representative of the denomination of origin qualified Priorat, one of the two wines selected. It is a characteristic wine with Garnacha and Cariñena. Here we have La Planeta, this is a 2015 vintage, which had a very elevated percentage, 80% of Cabernet Sauvignon and a 20% Garnacha. It comes from a vineyard that we have here nearby, at the foothills of the Mont Sand, at 634 meters above sea level. I believe it is the highest vineyard of Priorat. This is good for this variety of grape that we use. Cabernet, as it fits very well with the climate here at this altitude. It is a vineyard very open to winds and with soils formed with what remains from the erosion of the mountain of Monsant, with rolling stones and conglomerates that compose this kind of soil that is characteristic from this particular site. This is a bunch of Cabernet Sauvignon, right? Yes, this is Cabernet Sauvignon. This is small grain. It is a bunch with the grape loose, clear. Garnacha has a much tighter bunch. Yes, yes, yes. This is a 2015 with 34 months in barrel. Not bad. It's not common to have it so long, but that year was a special year. That should be noticeable Let's see. Thank you. We are very passionate of Cabernet Sauvignon's variety and decided to introduce it here. It is not one of the autochthonous varieties, but it's also allowed by the DOQ and it's very good. Right, it is a different wine. Right, it's a different wine. Cabernet Sauvignon is also used by other wineries here. But we have the advantage that we have a different terroir in this vineyard. This grape would not work well with Licorella since it would irradiate too much heat into the plant. This is not something that works well with this grape. Therefore, Passanao, it could distinguish from other wineries with this wine because you are one of the few producers of Cabernet Sauvignon in this region, but also because you grow it in a very particular location where, aside of being a vineyard with one of the highest altitudes, it possesses this conglomerate of soil, which is pretty rare at Priorat. Yes, this rock makes the place very special.
We work ecologically and the richness of the terrain is very helpful. We leave the cover crop, lots of insects, and every season is different. In the spring we have... How do you say it? Poppy, flowers... Rosellas. We have rescued this bottle from our archive. It is La Planeta as well. From each year we have saved some bottles. We still have 60 or 70 bottles from this 2009 vintage. Just for you to see a little bit the evolution with time, the evolution of the wine in the bottle. Yes, I can see this color is browner. Helped by the wood. Yes, the wood is more intense. More, more intense. Good evening. So here we are at the store of uh, the winery of Toto Marquez. Uh, this is a very peculiar store because uh, this is a place where we can try the wines, but also, as we will see later, is a motorbike store. So it's a combination of two passions here that they have. And so Toto Marquez is a relatively young winery of uh, Pirat. They started making wine in 2007. And so they patiently waited uh, until 2015 where they could uh, release their first uh, wine bottles. So today I am uh, with uh, Willy Marquez, who is one of the owners of this uh, winery, who has uh, very uh, gently uh, 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 agreed to uh, explain us about uh, the wines and the characteristics as uh, some of the most uh, now renowned wines of the uh, year. So we're going to talk in Catalan. Uh, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for receiving us. Please, can you make a little presentation of the winery and of your wines? We are a family winery. We started in 2007, like you said. Until 2015, we were working on developing a wine with a quality to be able to make it every year, with a trademark as we desired. And we leveraged on being at Priorat. Should I serve a little bit and we taste it? Yes, please. The wine displays red and black fruit, mature. Currants, blackberries. Then as the wine opens, from when it's open until it expresses itself fully may take half an hour. We always recommend to open at least 15 minutes before drinking for all the aromatics to show themselves. Then a few more complex aromas start appearing, notes that appear little by little. A little bit of licorice. How do you like, Leo? It shows a moderate astringency and good balance. It does not stand out, but you still feel it. Yes, yes, and it's persistent. Yes, it is persistent. Good to accompany rice and meat dishes. That would be ideal. What do you think? Well, what I feel most is the persistence of the flavours, and that they keep appearing notes of spices such as yes like clove yes it also leaves a little note of hot spice 
Yes, that's what I meant. Perhaps wasabi if we go down that route. And that, as the flavors evolve in the palate, it shows this spicy character. This is a characteristic coming from the vineyard. This spicy character is definitely coming from the vineyard. We have found it in Garnacha. We have found it in Cariñena. It seems to be in all of our wines. Therefore, these characteristics that are more retronasals, that uh, become obvious at the end, are associated to characteristics of the vineyard. That's interesting, yes. Particularly associated with the surroundings of the vineyard. The vineyard is full of other wild plants. Some of these spicy characters come from those plants in the vineyard. They are in the vineyard. They stay there. They degrade and end up forming part of the terroir. The mineralogy is also present in the wine. Let's try Cirrus. This has a more purple color. Syrah is a variety with much smaller berries, which makes us find more skin per quantity of water. This helps to obtain a more intense color, more tannins. It also displays lots of fruit. This will be your... Our little baby. You said you only produce 600 bottles? Yes, only 600 bottles. A very special thing. You can see the purple colour stands out. On the edges, it's a little redder. Yes, in the rim. Very marked legs. It also needs to open up. It's very aromatized. Very mature fruit. I feel it, a different fruit. I taste figs. Yes, you can also find cacao. This is one of my favorite wines. Fabulous. We did not know this one. This is a 2017, and the acidity is very present. The wine can improve and age for a long time. We have learned about one of the most exciting wine production areas in the world. Priorat DOQ is truly unique. Its landscapes captivating, its people special, and its wines certainly unique. I hope that you have enjoyed the journey. And remember, these documentaries require the collaboration of those from the production area. If you love wine and live in a denomination of origin and want to emulate what our collaborators Guillén and Leo have done in Priorat, don't hesitate. Contact us and let's prepare a new documentary together. Cheers. <laughs>